screen around in the 2D view. And see these blocks here? When you scroll your mouse over them, it will change your course here and will basically indicate which way you can maneuver the block around. I'll left click on the bottom right and drag it down here to make it a bit bigger. Alright, if it starts stretching the texture, then you'll have this turned on, which is the scaling texture lock. Which means basically every time you move the block, it will keep the texture instead of basically cutting it out. What we'll do is keep it there for now and turn it off. Okay, let's add in some walls. Okay, block tool again, left click, drag and pull down and then of course let's go back and then just drag it up you, oh, you can drag things by putting your mouse in the center of it left clicking and dragging around so that way you don't have to keep on remaking it every time although if I did left click oh don't worry <laughs> Okay, in the middle one, top middle, I'm going to drag it up by 256 pixels as it states here on the left side. 256 pixels is about the average height for each wall. Um, every texture states that it is 512 by 512. Um, since it's scaled down by 22, 25%, so it's basically a quarter of the height. So usually it'll be 128. That's what the texture will be. Sometimes, sometimes um, textures can be modulated, so you can stack them on top of each other, and no one will know. That's what I do sometimes, but it's best not to do that. It's best to stack different textures on top of each other to make it look a bit more realistic and more detailed and such. But yeah, okay. So that's our wall go back into browse and I'm going to look for sort of a concrete space wall so now it's filtered out everything and given me uh, all the textures that have concrete and wall in their name instead of concrete wall as one word okay I'm gonna go with this one here which is concrete wall 002a Double click on it and then press enter. Okay, see how it's stacked them both up on top of each other now? You can tell where the first layer is, which is right there, and the other one is right up here. Okay, awesome. Okay, so that's our wall, which people can pin things onto, blow things up, whatever they would like to do. Okay, let's create some more, click and drag, press enter. You'll notice that when I did that, I did not have to scale in the side or front. That's because whatever I select using the selection tool, it will gather all the coordinates of what I selected and when I next make the block tool and then start um, you know, creating a block in the top view it'll snap the corners of what I selected into the side view and front view. It's exactly the same if I did it for the side and front view as well. All right. It's also selected the same texture of what I selected before. That is not the same as what I selected though when I used the selection tool. All right. Let's, let's finish up these walls. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is put in a bit of sky. Now this will be a very simple sky, not something that you'd really want to brag on about or something that the players would be able to jump out of and go all the way out of the map. This is mainly just um I say it. It's mainly just something to make it look like sky so that it's separated everything else. Alright. Okay, so just drag it all through the middle. Drag it up. Here we go. And I'm going to type in tools space sky. 
Okay, now there's sky fog and there is sky box. What we need is the sky box. This is what the sky will. This is basically to indicate where the sky will be in the editor. But in the game, when it is finished, it will have the texture which you'll see in Half Life 2 and Gary's mod and so on, like that. Alright. Okay, so there we go, there's our little box of a map. Okay, okay, now, start points. Click on the entity tool, and on the right side it'll have info underscore player underscore deathmatch. It may have something else for you, it may be blank, it may be player start, it may be light, it may be something else. Don't worry about what it says, just left click on it so that it highlights and type in um, info underscore player deathmatch or whatever ent entity you wish to use. Okay. Now these info player deathmatch entities, this will be where the player will start. As soon as they revive after being killed or as soon as they enter the world, this will be where basically, you know, they start on the game. So to place these, all you do is you go into the 3D view and you can left click anywhere in the map. You put it on the floor, it's best to put them on the floor because if you put them in the sky then as soon as people start they'll fall to their death and have to respawn and possibly fall to their death again. Alright, okay, so that's basically your start points. You can put in as many of these as you like. Although it is best to put in around eight, eight at the absolute minimum, because don't forget that some servers could have sixteen players, some other ones can have thirty-two, depending on which game you're doing it for. Since we're doing it for Gary's mod, I'm taking a wild guess that about eight, about eight or sixteen players, sixteen is about the average. Um, it's best to put in sixteen start points. So that way, as soon as the server starts, people don't start dying as soon as they revive or end up halfway through the floor um, because they collide with other players. And of course, the server might have God mode turned on or something like that. So it's best to put in as many as you can. Alright, cool. Okay, now, this map here is playable. You can play it as much as you like, you can build things in it. You can do all sorts of weird things, alright? But the map will be bright. You know, there won't be any shading or lighting or anything. Of course, most maps are, are like that. But um, to make a map very. a bit more exciting, a bit more fun, you need to add in just that little dash of. Um, of spark. You know, you've got to have something. So let's add in. A light environment entity. Type in light underscore environment. Usually it'll highlight what you're about to type, but you can keep on typing. Alright, now light environment, this will indicate the light of which the um, sky will be projecting from. Now this is from the sky, not from the sun. Not from where the entity is, but the sky, which is this block here. This is what we put in before. This is the sky. All right. If you had this in a different direction, that's where it'll be projecting from. If you had this in 20 other different places in your map, that's where the light will be projecting from. Don't worry about any other entities. Don't worry about where this entity is. You can put this entity anywhere you want. Let's put it down here. All right. Just put it anywhere you want, but it's best to put it up in the middle of the sky, so that way you know where it is at all times.